Hey guys, we're back. It's AG Sports coming at you with a short video today. Uh, just a few updates about the algorithm as well as uh, some possible plays coming up here later on in the week. Uh, and then some line movement that I wanted to go over uh, as we just continue moving through the week and getting closer to all these kickoffs. So first of all, uh, one of the pieces of the algorithm that I wanted to add here is the actually let me just move this over so you can see it better this measurement field here so as of now which is the first two weeks and three weeks including this week's picks we've been taking into account home field advantage quarterback ranking offensive and defensive ranking what we have not been taking into account is the starting field position and the dvoa uh, both of those have not been taken into account because First of all, it's the new season. Secondly, we're only two games in. So these two uh, fields here typically don't come into play until about week four. Now, one thing I do want to add to this is this probability line here. If you've never really paid attention to it uh, throughout the rest of the videos, the probability is how likely is it that this particular measurement has absolutely nothing to do with the way the game plays out. So one of the things here is the quarterback ranking. The quarterback ranking is .0001, which means that it's almost definitely going to come into play. There's almost no likelihood that the quarterback rankings don't come into play throughout an actual NFL game, which makes sense. Your quarterback is going to have a direct effect on the game each and every game. Something like your average starting field position, though, there is roughly a, almost a 20% chance that this has nothing to do with the way that the game plays out. So even as we get close, uh, further into the season, this isn't a stat that I take very, very heavily uh, because there's, there's just a likelihood that it's just not going to play out in the course of one week, you know, with no bye weeks or 16 games. That means that roughly three of them are really not going to be affected by your average starting field position. Uh, whether that's because of the way the teams play or because it just doesn't go according to plan or the teams have not, uh, they end up not getting their average field position that they had been in previous games. So that's just kind of a fluky stat. It, it does have some stickiness to it, but not nearly as much as the others. Now the DVOA is a huge difference here uh, as it gets further into the season and these DVOA numbers become actually substantial. Uh, and it has a huge uh, shift on the lines as far as you know we're concerned and the algorithm is concerned as of right now it is still a little too early to really get going with that dvoa number not to say that they're not accurate dvoa is always a great number to use but again when it's only been two games into the season it's a very short sample size um usually nfl is a small sample size anyways but when we're only two games in a lot of the numbers are going to be dictated by the teams that you have played. So I'm not taking that too heavily just yet, but I want to show you what some of these numbers will look like when the DVOA does get added in. So the 49ers went from uh, what was previously three and a half point dogs uh, with the Madden algorithm to four point favorites, which is more in line with the current spread from Vegas. The Browns are totally different. Uh, this is because the DVOA is so drastically different on these two. They ended up being like a 20-point favorite if you add it in, so I have not accounted that here. Um, Cowboys end up as like 10-point favorites. So, you, like I said, a lot of this you could tell is not too super accurate just yet, uh, just because the DVOA does range so heavily. But I wanted to let you guys know that it is coming up. It is something that we're going to start accounting for uh, sooner than later. When we account for it in this Bucks game, though, it does give us a, a negative 1.5, which means that it would make the Rams one and a half point favorites, which is exactly what the line opened up with at Vegas. So I do think that Vegas and the bookmakers are starting to take DVOA into account, and that's why we're seeing some of these numbers uh, kind of you know get posted where they are being posted. It's really up to us to decide which of these teams it is accurate on and which ones it is not. And that's where we're going to find our value. This is one of those games where I do think DVOA can come into play, but I think it's still being overrated for the most part across the board. So while they're taking these numbers into account, let's not do that just yet. I'm still sticking with my Rams plus one and a half. That line has totally moved and shifted. That line has moved to now Bucks. Uh, I'm sorry, I had Bucks plus one and a half. It is now Rams plus one and a half. So definitely had a, a lot of line movement there, all in our favor. So that's three points of line value that we have in that game if you grab that line already. 
the Patriots, though, with the DVOA taken into account, it does take them uh, from what was roughly about two and a half point favorites to five point favorites, and right now they're listed at three. So kind of a mix or kind of right in between as far as what Vegas uh, has actually put out there but I just wanted to show you these again so you know that they're, they are coming up I am keeping them in the back of my mind here we will be putting them in the algorithm most likely starting next week and uh, depending on how this week goes uh, for sure by week four we will definitely be incorporating these more into the algorithm uh, as well as looking more and more to my grading algorithm and kind of weighing that uh, a little bit more heavily in conjunction with the Madden ratings and then usually by about week seven or so week six seven eight probably later on towards like the eighth week or so is when we'll really shift and almost go uh, you know very heavy or we will go very heavy on the grading algorithms uh, and then DVOA and then Madden ratings and algorithms will kind of be like the last thing that we take into account so it'll do a complete 180 um, but again just want to kind of let you guys know that that's there uh, one thing I did mention already was the line shifts so I wanted to go over this with you guys because there was a couple things here that I had given to you guys uh, on Tuesday it's only been a day but these numbers have just been flying all over the place so we did take the Panthers and the Texans under 44 and a half. Hopefully you grabbed that line when I gave it to you yesterday. That line has dropped a point and a half. It is down to 43. Um, it, this is still a, a number or a game that you can actually tease if you wanted to. Uh, and just a same game tease. I don't really ever do that myself. Uh, but the way the numbers are looking, you could do that right now. Get the Panthers down to one and a half. Get the under down to 49. You'd get key numbers in both of these. You'd get 44, 47 on the total. And then you'd get the 7, the 6, and the 3 on the side. So that is one way to look at it. Uh, the next one, though, like I said, was the Bucks and the Rams. Uh, again, it went from the Bucks being plus one and a half to now it's all the way down to Bucks minus one. And in other books, it is Bucks minus one and a half. So again, that's about uh, almost three points or at least two and a half points of value in our direction. Uh, the Broncos line, let me see that here, is a little bit of a uh, conundrum, <laughs> if you ask me. So it is down to minus 10. I think that 11 was probably just a little bit too high, and a lot of people ran to, re to bet the Jets. I agreed that that plus 11 was too much, but if you've heard me before... I just I cannot bring myself to bet on a team uh, that I do not think has a chance to win. Regardless of how many points you give me, I just can't do it. Uh, and I kind of refuse to do it because if I'm not thinking that a team has at least a chance to win, I'm, I'm just not going to bet them and assume that they don't get boat raced. That's just not how it works or that's not how I work. Um, so this one we have lost a point of value. So that moved away from us, but we got the T, so we still have it at minus 5. Obviously, it's better than the minus 10. Um, the over-under, though, has gone in accordance to what we thought. So we had the under 47.5 with the T's. It is down to 41 at this point, so we've gained about a half a point in value there. Uh, the Chargers Chiefs has also moved away from us, so it's uh, one point of value that we lost on this one. We had the Chiefs minus 7 teased down to the minus 1. Right now it's a minus six. If you teased it right now, you would be teasing it down to just a pick them. Uh, the last one here is the Cardinals Jaguars. The Cardinals Jaguars, we had teased this as well. We had teased it uh, from seven to one. So we have gained a half a point of value or closing line value in this game. Although, again, it has obviously not closed yet. Uh, and then lastly was the, I'm sorry, I said last one on this one, uh, Bears and the Browns. We did also gain a half point in value here. So we had this plus seven and a half for the Bears. The hook must have been enticing enough for other people to take it because it has been moved down to just plus seven. So we have uh, quite a bit of line value moving in our direction uh, with just about two of them that have moved away from us. And the two that moved away from us were about a half point to a point, depending on what book you're looking at. Uh, so the line value is in our favor this direction. Remember, every half point that we get in our favor is a 1.5 percentage chance that you win that particular wager. So, in the sense of, uh, or in the case of like the Buccaneers, a three point uh, move or favorite is about a 4.5 percent chance increase that we win that wager, which will take us to about 54.5 percent. And keep in mind, we are just trying to stay above 52 percent. Obviously, the more the better. So, those are the line moves. Those are some of the algorithm changes that are coming up. 
The last thing I want to go over, though, guys, is Cleet Lakeman. Uh, I know we touched on this last week, and he was the ref between the Chiefs and Ravens game, so obviously that one went over. Cleet didn't really have a lot to say with that. Um, one thing that I have thought of, though, and that I've been looking at more and more when taking that game into account, if you look at the first game Cleet Lakeman uh, ref, there was a lot of callbacks, uh, just a lot of a lot of kind of shaky calls at best, uh, and it resulted in the under. In week two, he ends up kind of doing like a hands-off approach. Now, keep in mind, week two, not only was it the Chiefs and Ravens, it was a Sunday night game. So there is a very good possibility that the NFL put in a call to say, hey, you know, ease up on the flags, let them play a little bit. We don't want a stinker for, you know, our primetime Sunday night game between these two heavyweights. So I've had some people tell me that Cleet Blakeman, it's, it's not going to happen again. It's not something to be concerned with. I'm not so sure still. I would not let that one game sway you off of that. Uh, I'm not saying to go bet the unders just yet, but he is going to be refing the Steelers game this week, and it is Steelers at Bengals. So I would really be, I am going to personally be, um, looking at this game, watching this game, and seeing how it turns out to see if it was truly just the NFL saying, hey, don't throw so many flags, or if this was more uh, of a change in demeanor for Cleet and his, you know, refing crew there. And just for uh, kind of backdating here, looking back at some of the numbers we've given you, Cleet Blakeman's first game was Dolphins at Patriots, and that ended up being a 17-16 to game. That's really kind of the M.O. for Cleet Blakeman. So just keep that in mind. If you want to see where these assignments are coming from, guys, it is footballzebras.com. If you go there, they will show you the current assignments uh, and kind of break it down game by game, who's doing which game. And then if you really want to, it even gets into like the, the info for each individual referee, like where they come from, uh, what kind of background they have, you know, if they have any degrees, any, anything notable about their career as a referee. So just, you know, good, good thing to, to look at. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard from a pro athlete came from Mr. Late Great Kobe Bryant, who said that he used to read the referee handbook on the way to games. Uh, not like his whole career, but when he was first in the NBA. And it was one of the best things he could do because he learned where the refs were going to be, what they could see, what they could call, you know, how they, how their job was done and by doing that he better understood how he could and could not get away with certain things on the court same goes for football guys while we are not on the field it would really behoove each and every one of us as nfl betters to understand each of these referees how they call the games and what they are looking for just like a batter in baseball and you need to know that umpire where their strike zones are at each one of these refs is just a little bit different guys so keep all this in mind check out the website if you are serious about betting if even if you're only betting ten dollars a game or you know a dollar a game for that matter if this is something you see yourself doing long term something that you really want to get interested in take the extra little bit of time that will take you from being average or bad or just okay to good and make take you from you know, a losing better to just you know a, a break even better or a breaking even better to a winning better just put in that little bit of extra work guys and you will be better than the rest of the group here obviously you followed my picks i'm not some millionaire i'm not vegas dave you know giving out a hundred percent winners you know as he would say but I am above average as far as uh, win rate is concerned, as far as you know, unit return is concerned. So just like I said, the one thing I could tell you right now is that the little bit extra that you go out and do by yourself and homework that you research and the few little angles that are out there that are not being covered by every little NFL analyst out there will separate you from the rest of the pack. But anyways, I hope all this was helpful, guys. Thanks again. Have a great day and good luck uh, as we get into kickoff time.